In my last video, I showed a quick and easy way on how to battle damage your space marines. And in this video, I'm adding more detail onto the veteran marines to help them stand out. I love the idea of having a group of veterans in an army, because it gives you a chance to have a unit that looks similar to the most of the army, but have small details that helps them stand out from the rest. I've already added some battle damage on them, and I'm sure you've spotted it by now, yes one of these veterans does have a terminator helmet on. I wish there was some cool story behind it, but when assembling him, the head flew off the sprue and onto the floor of no return. So instead of looking for a new one, there's a spare terminator head on the next sprue, and I just thought, meh, let's just stick this one on. I also gave them the same paint job as I did with the Inferno squad. McCraig Blue, Abaddon Black, Retributor Armor, Lead Belcher, Mournfang Brown, and a Nullin Oil Shade mixed with a Lemon Medium. The thought of painting white can be fearful, but it's well worth it to make the veterans stick out from the rest of the army. I used two thin layers of Corax White that was mixed with Lemon Medium, and I spread it around as evenly as I can. To make your guns stand out more, I went with Mephisto on red instead of Abaddon black, and I was thinking of giving each model their own custom gun colours, but I kind of forgot about it when I had already started, so I might do it with some of the future models. The veteran with the heavy bolter has some cables around him, so I decided to give Corvus black a go, and it's a slightly faded black colour and I really like it. With the white dry, I usually go with apothecary white over any white I painted, like I did with my Cities of Sigmar army, but I decided to shade it with Farnesian grey this time. I diluted it with lemon medium to make it shade into the recesses, but making sure not to let it pool up. For the tabards, I went with Zandri dust. To shade the red on the guns down, I was stuck with either Flesh Terror's Red or Blood Angel's Red to tone it down. In the end, I decided on Flesh Terror's Red and mixed it with Contrast Lamin Medium. I then shaded the silver parts with Null and Oil. I had completely forgotten about adding transfers onto the Inferno squad, so I made sure to do it this time. And it's been years since I've added transfers onto any model. And I was looking around to see what was the best way to get them stuck on. But I just decided to put them in water and to place them on that way. There's probably much better ways of doing it, but this way just worked for me years ago. Then I took a chance on adding some Storm Shield mixed with Lamb and Medium over them. And after a lot of pushing and pulling them into the right spot, they turned out okay. But they were too clean looking. So I decided to add some acrylic blue onto the white edges to kind of give it a chipping look and then went over it with multiple thin layers of null and oil. I had no idea what I was doing but I'm happy with how it turned out. I then shaded the tabard down with good old seraphim sepia. The sergeant has his little shield on his chest so I give it this checker pattern look on it with corax white. It's now time to add the battle damage on, and I did it the very same way I did with the Inferno squad. With the sponging technique first, I added Rhinox Hide onto the damaged areas, followed by Lead Belcher, and then I added in the Dirty Down Rust. I went back to the damaged parts then when it was all dry, and I lightly sponged on some Stormhole Silver over the raised parts. The tabard was then highlighted with Ushapti Bone along the edges and the raised parts. Unlike the Inferno squad, I started highlighting the blue armour a bit more. I wasn't really sure about doing it because it might look too clean for a battle damage model, so I was only highlighting parts of the blue armour. Keeping the highlights going, I switched to the white parts and I went with white scar to edge highlight the helmet and the shoulder pads. One of the guys has what I think is a combi plasma weapon, so I wanted to add some blue onto it. I started with Temple Guard Blue and then I went with Briar Queen Chill. Then I added a little Temple Guard Blue on the higher parts and then as carefully as I could I added some white scar along its upper edges. For the eyes I used Blood Angels Red and I tried really carefully not to get any of it on the white but I was able to clean it up after with Corax White. One of the sergeant's weapons looks like it has a flamer on it, so I added some muzzle burn onto it with Drakenhoff Nightshade, Carburg Crimson and Seraphim Sepia. It was almost finished, but I couldn't help notice that the rust didn't pop as much as it did with the Inferno squad. Maybe the dirty down rust wasn't at the right temperature, I'm not too sure. So I took out a paint that I don't think I've ever used, and I very lightly started dry brushing Rise of Rust onto the very top parts of the damage to make it pop out a little bit better. 
Just when I had everything based and I thought it was finished, I remembered that I was supposed to paint the sergeant's helmet red. But it's a bit late now to do it, so I decided to give him a red stripe instead with my fist on red, shaded with flesh tears red, and then a highlight of Evil Sun's scarlet that was also added onto the guns. I really like the look of the battle damage on the Space Marines, and I'm glad that I was able to add more details to the veteran squad. The red weapons, the white parts, and the raised bases really make them stand out from normal Space Marines. The Dirty Down Rust didn't work quite as well as the last time, and as great as it is, it can be a tricky thing to master. But I'm glad I had a pot of Riser Rust on hand just to add a little extra on in the end. But if you guys like this video, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and once again, thanks for watching.